The other interesting thing about the customer development process ties back into agile engineering and agile development hand in glove. Basically, it's this notion of the minimum viable product. Back in the old days, what we used to do is specify the entire feature set of the product from beginning to end. Now, this makes sense when you're in a large company releasing version 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0 because you kind of have a feeling of who the customers are and what they need. So a product manager can be pretty accurate about, you know, I've been interacting customers for the last year and a half and I think I know what they need. But in a startup, you're really kind of guessing. And the odds are you're going to be guessing wrong. So rather than waste a whole ton of time and money, why don't we actually get outside the building before we build something and waste a lot of engineering time and more importantly, cash, because that's what puts startups out of business is running out of money. We want to make sure that we actually listen to the people who eventually will buy this product. We want to make sure we satisfy their wants and needs. Uh, so why don't we just figure out how to build the minimum viable product? Build the minimum features in order to get feedback. Now, feedback could take the form of input and, and verbally, or they gave you early orders, or they gave you anything that was valuable in helping you come to closure of what should we be building in what order. And by the way, an MVP could be something as simple on the web as a wireframe or a PowerPoint slide, or for a physical product, it could be a physical mock-up, or it could be a working part of the system. But as you get more feedback, you could start adding more features. So one caveat is a comment I always get is, well, Steve Jobs didn't build the iPhone by asking customers. And we really doubt Henry Ford asked customers, did they want a car before one existed? In fact, in his case, if you would have asked people about what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse or one with six legs. And so the immediate response is, well, therefore, for new products, you just don't get out of the building at all. And that's just a fallacy. There is a type of startup in what we call a new market. And we'll be describing new markets in the customer segments lecture. But just understand that in new markets, of course you don't get out and ask people what features they need, but you do want to understand how is their day in the life different today versus the day after you give them your new product? How does their world change? And there's no possible way sitting locked in your conference room or your office you would know that without talking to customers.